crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's video, I'd like to share a live unboxing of my new products from this annual catalog by Stampin' Up. It's our 2020-2021 annual catalog. And the weekend is upon us and I just figured I better do an unboxing because otherwise I'm going to be tempted to just start crafting with all these items and I'd like you and I to share the experience of seeing these items for the first time and that way I can then start crafting with them because I'm going to be doing some some swaps with some groups and things and I want to be able to open up these items and be able to share them with you. All right, I have some people joining me. So hello Darlene and Donna. Can you hear me okay? Because this is not the most optimal time for my bandwidth. I usually don't do lives at this time because I have to always rely on some intermittent bandwidth issues. All right, so what I'm going to open first is Hippo. Yay, good. Hi, Patty. Good, I'm glad you can hear me good. Okay, I'm going to open up Hippo Happiness first. Now, I, I don't even know what kind of stamp set this is. Like, if it's Okay, here it is. It's photopolymer. I am not even peeking. It's kind of like my paper pumpkin where I like to just be surprised myself. So this is Hippo Happiness. Hip, hippo, hooray. When in doubt, be a unicorn. Oh, this is going to be fun. So we have a little, a little sheep, a little butterfly, hippos, and unicorns. Now this is, this is what's called two-step stamping. It may even take three steps. It looks like these, these are in maybe two parts. Everything's going to be able to be layered in parts. And let's see what the dies look like. So I did get the dies because whenever you get a bundle, you get a bundle, you, get, you save 10%. That's when a bundle's first released. I'm trying to open these up. So when you first get, when, when something's first released in the catalog, Hippo Happiness, I'm just going to try to open up to the pages as well. Because if I do that, Hippo Happiness is on page 49. Then you get to, while I'm, while I'm crinkling with the paper, you get to see some examples at least. So this was page 49. Here we go. So this is what this is. These are the examples the artist came up with for this hippo happiness bundle. So you get to look at that while I'm opening up the dies. I can't resist anything cute and whimsical in the catalog. So everything cute and whimsical. Hi Carmen and Patty. Thanks for joining me. Oh, I'm so excited. The reason I'm so excited is because here's why I'm excited. The stitch dies. There's some things you can't do with them, you know, with my machine very easily. Now, although the scan and cut does do some stitching, it doesn't do it as well as metal dies. So I'm excited about the stitch layered dies. And then now these these kinds of dies are great for stamped images, but sometimes I don't use them as intended because I tend to, when it comes to this kind of critter, like this, I would use my scan and cut most likely to cut out the animals right because i would be doing a page of those 50 at a time that's my personal preference or i have another trick one of the other things i do is i would cut out a bunch of these so so i have some whisper white card stuck here so example i would cut out a bunch of these with my die cutting machine and i would stamp them later with the stamparatus if i was making lots and lots of them but it's just maddening for me meaning it just drives me crazy to cut out one stamped image at a time on a machine but it doesn't drive me crazy to do, that's just my personal thing, but to do something like this, where I take my, I, I just run a bunch of these through and stamp and then stamp the sentiments on later is kind of more my style. So I would do something like this, right? I would use a little bit of washi tape. I'd run them through my die cut machine, right? And I would fill up every little spot I could even with extra little sheep and everything if I had to. Trying to keep the sets together because I tend to mix up sets all the time. <laughs> tend to mix up things. I would do this, and I'm not sure what this one is. I don't know what this, this might be for a tag. Oh, it is, it's a hole. There's a hole in there. Let's put that behind something here. That's it, I have, just trying to grab cardstock this near me. Yeah, there's a hole, it's for a tag. How cool is that? So that's pretty neat, I would make so you could probably line it up and make a little tag. All right, so that's how I would use this dies like this. I would, I would cut out a bunch of these at once 
and I would end up with a bunch of extra, I'm trying to put that some, there it goes right there. I would end up with a bunch of extra pieces that I would, that would be in whisper white. So I would do loads and loads of these and stamp them later because I don't know what I want to stamp onto them yet. Right? It doesn't, it's, it, I don't know if I'm going to stamp the little hippos and the sheep. I don't know if I'm going to stamp sentiments or other stamp sets all together. So I just like to have lots of these on hand. So I'm very excited. That's why I was singing. Let's put this back. See how you can lose things easily. I actually store my dies on magnetic sheets. I don't store them in these cases. They come in. All right. So that was a home run for the hippo happiness. Hippo happiness bundle. So when you say, so here are your samples from the catalog. And then, so the stamp set itself is $18. And it's very unique. Very unique. And it has all these you can do the two-step stamping and you can you can put it on your stamping block and see through it so i will be doing more tutorials throughout the year with different products that you're seeing but i just wanted to get started in crafting with them which is why i wanted to unbox them so i can just start crafting all right i'm going to do next one i'm going to do unbox is called posted for you posted for you so if you're trying to find something quickly lose the index of your catalog page 81 that's how I find the stamp sets easily. So this is the next set, okay, posted for you. So I love going to the post office and I love, I love mailing things, sending happy mail. So I just can't imagine, I mean, I can imagine how fun this is going to be. Okay, so here's the posted for you stamp set. And it is, what's the word? Okay, rub, rub, cling, cling stamp set. Okay, so high quality, high quality detailed etched rubber. Okay, so I do like that. And then we have, I, I guess I have to use this. This is one of those things I can't help but use right away. So we're going to open up the punch and just do it. We're just going to do it. I can't help myself. So here we are. This is the punch. And it looks like a little stamp. So let's see. We're going to do love. We'll do this one called love. So you'll get to see how I mount a stamp. So I'm going to pull off the word love. Let's see which one that is with the leaves. Okay. So what you do is you pull out the rubber. You pull this off. You peel this off. I get rid of that. Now you're going to take the sticker sheet. And there's one side of the sticker sheet that has a little crease in it. See, see the little crease. You're going to pull off the little crease. You're going to pull this off. And get rid of that. So that's just your covering. Now you have to lay this down and you have to line up your stamp. So love, love, like that. There's the L and there's the L. So you're going to put it on there just like that. And this is called cling stamp. This is a cling stamp. And there I have the stamp. And I peel that off and I'm going to pull off a stamp I was using before. I really need to put my stamps away better. That's from a different set. And we're going to put that onto my stamping block. This is my go-to stamping block. It's called Stamping Block D. So you just stick that right on there. Okay, it sticks really well because it's a cling stamp set. All right, let's do this. Here's a piece of Whisper White. Here's the Love Stamp. Let's find some ink. I know I have ink here. Here's some ink. Memento Black is my go-to ink. Okay, you're going to put your ink down. Tap, tap, tap. Look at it. Tap, tap. You know, you're just getting the good, making sure that it's shiny and you just stamp. And you hold it there for a few seconds. Perfect. Right out of the, right out of the case. That's what rubber does. It, rub, rubber stamps are easier to use right straight away, right out of the case. As opposed to sometimes photopolymer, you have to season a little bit. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's, then you get the punch open. You go like this. You push that to get the punch open. Stick that in there. Oh my goodness, I'm going to love this. And that's, that's all you do. And now you have a cute little postage stamp. So imagine now layering these behind some rectangles. So we can use our scan and cut to cut out a bunch of rectangles that will evenly fit behind there. I like the postage stamp shape. And I like being able to cut the stamped images straight away. Right? That's easy. Now we can take, make some rectangles to do some layering. Now they didn't do that here. They just put a bunch of the postage stamps layering them. I'm thinking that, that this would look nice putting behind, putting some color behind it as well. Not that big of a border, maybe 
maybe just a little tiny border. So picture something like that and you know, you can layer, make lots of little things. Okay, so that's called posted for you. All right, another home run stamping up. I'm so happy, so happy with my pre-order so far. Let's talk about Zany Zebras next. Push that off to the side. All right, Zany Zebras. Let's see if the samples, what page that one's on. Sorry if my camera's fogging up. It looks like, I don't know what's happening. Sorry, I'm just going to rub my, sorry. It looks like my camera's getting fogged up. It's so hot in my room. All right, so Zany Zebras. They're such cute samples in the catalog. And you kind of use the catalog as a starting point, and then you can, and then you do your own thing. Page 104. But it's always good for inspiration. The graphic artists have come up with lots of samples for us. So how fun is this? Here's the Zany Zebras. Okay, and so you can just stamp a bunch of them, like they're running or jumping. You can, you can stamp them in different colors. And I know I got this one too, so let's dig out that one. Since they're both whimsical. Hi, Patty. <laughs> they're both whimsical stamp sets, so I'll see if I have that one in this case. Now, I didn't get all my whole order yet, but I, I just think I think I just saw that when I ripped it up in my box. Yes, I did. Here it is. Oh, how fun. So we'll just talk about these ones together. Wait to go. So let's talk about Zany Zebras first and see what what the sentiments say and everything will kick up your heels. This is just going to be a great birthday stamp set. I'm already looking at thinking about how I'm going to do this with the scan and cut. I, but I know it didn't come with any coordinating dies. So this is going to be something that I would have to use the pencil trick for, meaning enclosing that mane of the zebra. The rest of it has a well-defined outline, so I can totally see cutting these out. And then you don't really need to do any coloring. I mean, really, just a little bit of, I mean, they're already cute. They're already black and white. They're zebra, after all. You could, you could stamp these in different colors, but I'm thinking that they look cute just in black and white. Maybe what I would do with these is just use some Wink Estella, you know, like the glitter brush, and brush over, make them a little bit shiny, something like that. Give them a little personality. Maybe you could, you could color their little hooves or their little snout maybe, but it gave them a little personality. I'm not sure yet. Put a party hat on them. All right, this is, ooh, yes. Happy, happy. I don't even look at what kind of stamp set it is before I buy it, but this is a cling stamp set. And that means like, I, I think these are just a higher quality stamp and they just give you a more detailed image. So happy for the zany zebras. I'm happy with that. Let's say, put that over there. And what's this way to go? Oh my goodness, this is going to be so much fun. This is definitely one I would do swaps with, like something like this, because I love like goofy stuff. Now, someone asked me, is your little piggy still a favorite? Yes, my this little piggy is still my favorite, but this is going to replace him as far as like, this little piggy retired, so now I like to have something that can be my go-to my go -to stamp for, st for my scan and cut, and this is going to be it. This is going to be the one where we can do cutting out stamped images with. I mean, look how easy this is gonna be. No pencil trick needed, nothing. Except for this one has a little tiny gap I can see there. This is gonna be so easy to cut these out. Let's see what kind of stamp set it is. Another cling stamp set. Yippee. Way to go. And you know what, I think this is gonna look really good with that wood paper, the, the paper that's called In Good Taste with all the wood textures. This is gonna look good with that. All right. Pretty good. Now let's see what else. This is some watercolor paper I've been waiting on. So this was this was actually just it, it was on back order, and it's now here. So watercolor paper is very it's like very thick and and it absorbs. Oh yeah, this is this is nice. So I got my watercolor paper. This is now in stock again. I don't know how long it'll stay in stock, but it's called Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Use it with watercolor pencils. And so here's my watercolor pencils. These are not new. I've, I've had these for ages. Let's just pull out one just to show you the watercolor paper. Here's one. This is Pacific Point, I believe. Yep, Pacific Point. So I'm going to use an old aqua painter. I did get the new aqua painters, but I'm going to use an old aqua painter. An aqua painter is just another way. You can, you can use a, a color pencil 
on your watercolor paper. You can just draw if you want and add water later. I mean, that's an option for you. If you want to, if you want to color in something really precisely with your watercolor pencil and add water later, you can, right? But I don't like to do it like that. I like to do it like this and there's no right or wrong way. Don't let anyone ever tell you there's a right or wrong way. I like to do it like this two ways, either this way where I put a little bit of water on the pencil or I like to just use the brush. I put the pencil onto the brush and then I color with it. See, and I just get much, I just get much more even coverage and this paper soaks up the water really well. Now, of course you would, you would, if you're going to color stamped images, you're going to stamp first and let that dry. I would use not this kind of ink because this is water based. You don't want to use this kind of ink. It'll get all over the place. You want to use the stays on ink. Stays on is like a pigment ink, so it won't mix with the water and run all over the place. And we'll do some other kind of tutorial on that. But I like my watercolor paper because it doesn't ooze all over the place it, and it'll soak it in later. It's very, very fibrous. So let me, now I'm going to show you the new watercolor aqua painters. Okay, because I just got those in this catalog. Here, let's, let's close. Before I get this all over my catalog, these are the new aqua painters. Now I'm not going to use the new aqua painters just on this tutorial because I don't have any water to put in them and I don't want to bring water over to my table while I'm doing an unboxing, right? That was neat. It kind of snapped in a nice little case. So these are our new aqua painters. So in other words, this design has gone out. We're, we're getting rid of this design. And this is our new design for our aqua painters. I'm not sure why they redesigned them. Let's look at what, I'm not sure what that is either, but I'm finding out with you. It says in all different language, water painters. So they're not called aqua painters anymore. They're just, you just say water painter. Aqua, same thing, but I'm saying that's the name. Maybe that's just to not confuse. And then it has a little push for squeezing the water out. Let's see. Oh, it has much, a much finer tip. Okay, comparing this to the old one, there's a much finer tip. Oh, no, no, I get it. There's bigger tips. Oh, this is neat. I see what it's for now. Hold on, let me get rid, let me also clean up this one before I get it all over the place. What you have to do when you're done painting with your aqua painters to clean them up, you have to just draw on something. I'm just drawing on, this is how you clean up your aqua painter. I mean, besides washing it, I'm just, draw, I'm just drawing on my paper. Now I can put the cap on there. Otherwise I have a big mess on my table. All right, so now back to this. Let me put my water pencil away, watercolor pencil. We sell two sets of watercolor pencils. These are in our annual catalog. We sell this. This is called Collection Watercolor Pencils Collection 1 and Collection Assortment 2. And they, they're kind of a must-have in your craft room. All right, so let's talk about this. We're going to open this one up. This is the old aqua painters. I'm pretty sure they all looked the same. I'm pretty sure. They all have that same kind of tip. But the new ones, let's put the new ones like this so you can see the tip. And if you're commenting, I can't see your comments because I'm now concentrating down on my table here. Let's see what this is. Ah, yes. Okay, I get it now. Okay, so that's why you can, this is why the new set is cool. I mean, let's count the reasons it's cool. The design looks cool, but this is the real reason it's cool. This is a brush here. This is a brush. See? So if you want to do like a watercolor background, right, you can brush your watercolor backgrounds. It'll come out something like this. Okay, let me show you this paper. This paper, this is called Artistic Impressions. Or, no, Artistry Blooms. I, I already forgot the name of it. Artistry Blooms Designer Series Paper. Now, in my last video, or one of my last videos, I don't know if it was two videos ago. I think it was last video. I, I opened up all the Designer Series Paper because I'm having a Designer Series Paper share. So I'm not going to open this paper again for you because... We don't want to repeat ourselves too much on YouTube, right? I mean, it's good to repeat yourself sometimes for reinforcement, but not when it comes to opening up the same product over and over. So I've already opened this for you. You get to see the inside of it. So watch my recent video called Designer Series Paper Share, and you can see all 120 little sheets of paper you'll get in the Designer Series Paper Share. But what I'm trying to show you with this piece here is that this is what you use this for. If you want to make this, if you want to make paper like this, watercolor background, you can use this big brush is all I'm saying. Get your ink and you can, you know, water, you can use watercolor pencils. You can even use regular ink and watercolor with it, with those brushes. 
Okay, so that's, I'm excited about these new aqua painters or water, water painters. And I'm thinking these are, okay, they could have made the cap bigger, stamping up, you could have made the cap bigger because I'm trying to get this back in there. Maybe it's gonna be easier once it's wet, but it's hard to get back in there. There we go. And the small cap. They gotta, they gotta have testers like me who just mess up everything. Then it could be like a tester for, for products. All right, what else do we have here? We showed you that. This is, this is something interesting. Um, I've been talking about making stickers on my channel for a while now. And one of the stickers we made recently uh, in one of my tutorials, just you just got to search for it. In fact, I know people ask me where are my tutorials. Just, just do a search for creating stickers with your scan and cut. And you're going to see how I made stickers with this forever greenery designer series paper. We made some stickers recently. This, I used sticker paper and I said that Stampin' Up! didn't have any sticker paper at the time. Well, it's back in, meaning this new catalog, we've, we've now have sticker paper. So I gave you links to get it somewhere else this last year because two years ago we had sticker paper and then I guess something happened with our supplier. I'm not really sure what happened. Last year we did not sell sticker paper. This year we're selling sticker paper again. It's not called sticker paper. That's what I called it in my video. It's called adhesive sheets. Just so you know when you're Googling it or not Googling it, when you're looking on my store, Stampin' Up! store, which I didn't have time to link before I went live. I didn't even have time to make a link to my store. I just went live because I was so excited. You, you, it's, it's, um, here, here's the link. My, my thing's all dirty. Don't mind my mat. It's all dirty, but that's my store. Paperchef.stampinup.net. So if you go there, you can get adhesive sheets. These are going to be a must have for when you're die cutting. So the way they work is this. And let's first of all, talk about how many you get. They're 12 by six and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You get 12 of them. That's amazing. You get 12 of them and they're 6 by 12. All right, so here's how it works. Let me find a die. You're going to use these adhesive sheets this way. Say you want to make a sticker out of this little hippo. And he's all, and he's all stamped and you, you have him stamped on your paper. And you've stamped them. And now you adhere this. You adhere this. This is double-sided, this adhesive sheet. So you're going to peel off the adhesive. It's here you go. And you're going to put that onto this paper like this. And then you're going to put your dies. You're going to lay them all out. Because it's sticker sheet, you're going to use up every little inch you can. Every little part. And then when you're all done, you're going to turn it over and you're going to peel the other side and you're going to have stickers. And imagine not having to use adhesive on your cards. You can use sticker sheets and you can use it for your dies. You can use this with your scan and cut. You can use it with your punches. I could have made stickers out of these stamps. In fact, I may do that. I, do, I may make stickers out of these stamps because you know what? If I'm doing uh, swaps and I need to make 100 or something, I'm going to use stickers probably. And that just saves me all this time from having to use adhesive and having to use rolling adhesive and snail and the new, whatever the new one's called. It's called something else. Plus, anyway, seal. It's called seal. But anyway, that's adhesive sheets. So I got, I have, I got so excited, I bought two packs of those, two packs of adhesive sheets, just because I'm going to use that much of those. Demo it, please. Oh, I will demo it. I did demo it. Uh, Patty, I dem in, my, in my video called Creating Stickers with Your Scan and Cut, we used these. I used these in this, I used those in the video, Making Stickers with Your Scan and Cut. It was a different brand, but it all works the same. There's many brands of it. All right, I can't demo it right now because I don't have a, a die cut machine next to me, but I can show you at some point. All right, let's do the next one. Woo, let's find the catalog. I'm going to do what's called Whiskey Business. Whiskey Business is my new stamp set I'm going to show you. It is called, it is on page 33. And I'm pretty sure I got the cards ones too, so I'm going to reach in my box and see if the cards are here. Because cards and whiskey go together. Here is the stamp set. Whiskey business. I thought that would be fun. Let's see if I have the cards. I didn't get everything that I ordered yet, you know, so it's things are coming. Nope, I don't see it. But then again,
Don't mind all the noise. Okay, so this one is going to be really fun for coloring and cutting out. Sorry, my camera's shaking. I noticed that. Sending you an old-fashioned birthday card. Straight up, you're the best. This is just one of those really, it's going to be really popular around the world because we all know somebody that likes whiskey. If not ourselves, right? We, we know somebody. This can be masculine, feminine. This can be neat. This can be little, you can just do other things on the rocks there in the cup. Your top shelf, you could, you could put margarita, you can make a margarita glass too for that same sentiment. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe a piece of wood. Let's see what that is. It looks like a piece of wood, yeah, like a wood plank. Oh. Thank you for telling me something happened to the, my, my microphone because it fell inside my box. <laughs> Sorry about that. My microphone fell into my box when I was unpacking. I got all excited. All right, so what I was saying is I was wondering what this was, and I was, I was saying it, it's a wood plank. All right, so that's C. It is it is a a nice rubber cling stamp set, and we'll get to play with that more. And I did get the there's a there's a card one I got with that too, to go with cards and whiskey. Okay, and now I'm, next I'm going to show you a background stamp, and it is called camouflage. Camouflage, and it's on page 138. I do a lot of things for the military giving them some kudos for what they do. And I adopt troops through an organization called Operation Shoebox, if you ever want to adopt a troop. And this is just going to be fun to send things to, and, and to give things to troops that, and soldiers that we know, and sailors and soldiers, but it's also going to just be nice for anybody. Hunting, good backgrounds for masculine cards. You can even do something. Here's one they did a feminine purse with the camouflage. That with the with the other dies from another one. So this is called camouflage. Now what what you can do, and let's see. If, I'm just gonna make sure before I say it. Yes, we've pretty much in Stampin' Up got rid of wood block stamps. Okay, we got rid of wood except for these background, these giant background stamps. So here's here's the deal. You either need you need one of three ways. You're gonna have to stamp this in one of three ways. You either, if you don't have a stamparatus, you either need a stamparatus, which I don't have handy because it's kind of on the other side of the room, a stamparatus because you can take, you can, this is your camouflage stamp. So what you're going to do is peel this whole thing off. You're going to peel this off. You can put your sticker on it if you want, so you'll know where your patterns are going to go. And you can just put this on your stamparatus and your, or your stamp positioning tool, and you can put that down. Okay, that's one way. Okay, way two is you, giant, we have giant stamping blocks. It says stamping block, see it says it right here, you need block F, it's our giant stamping block. Okay, so that's another way, you put it on a big giant acrylic block. And when I say giant, I mean one of these, what we just used a minute ago, here, one of these, it's gigantic, it's big enough to hold one of these. That's what I'm talking about, okay? And then the third way is just to buy, if you don't have either of those, if you don't have the stamping block F, and you don't have a stamparatus, then you're probably better off just buying a wood block because this is already mounted onto the wood and it saves you all those steps. But I just, I didn't get the wood block because I already had it. I mean, I already have a way to mount this, in other words. All right, let's see what else is in my box. I'll try not to drop my microphone this time. I got excited. Okay, so this gizmo here, this is a, this is called cling adhesive. So this stuff is going to be to turn my old stamps into cling stamps. So what are cling stamps? This is a cling stamp. Okay, this is, this is the cling stamp, meaning the thing I've been showing you. The thing, this is a cling stamp. That's a cling stamp. And in the past, let's find one that's not a cling stamp. Let me, I'm just looking around to find something that's kind of old. You know, that, meaning in the past, they look just like that, but they're not called cling stamps. And I can now turn them into cling stamps. That's not a good example. I don't, if I have any, I could, they're all, all the ones I have happen to be cling stamps here. Signs of Santa, Christmas Hope. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll at some point show you. I'm going to turn, oh, here, here it is. I can do my piggy. 
I have my piggy always handy. Okay, here's my piggy. My piggy looks like it's a cling stamp. Okay, this little piggy, but it's not. It doesn't say cling stamp. All right, so here. So I, because it's not a cling stamp, I never bother putting the stickers onto the stamps. Because if I put the sticker onto the stamps, they, they don't stick. See, look, can you hear that? They don't stick. They don't stick on two sides. So I could have got them to stay on the stamp, but I would have never got these to stay onto the actual block. And then so, so the stickers were pretty much useless. If you put them on here, you could never get the stamp to stick onto the block. So for years and years, I had to just stamp like this. I just had to stick these straight onto the block because the stickers were useless because they don't cling. So now Stampin' Up! has got really smart here and they made this what's called cling adhesive. So now I'm going to convert my stamps to cling stamps. Let's see how these work. These are little tiny, they look kind of like a mailing label. They look pretty small. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to be able to take these and put these on my stamps now. Not this part already sticks. Th this part is fine. Like this part's already going to go on my piggy and I'm going to put it on the other side and I'm going to be able to then get these to stay onto the stamping block. This is double sided sticky stuff. So I'm going to turn my stamps into cling stamps. Now, if you, if you were to get this last year, like I had my stamps for so long, my piggy stamp, that I have one that's not a cling stamp. But I think last year we sold one that is. So the way you can tell is that the newer models, the newer ones have this black thing on them and they say cling stamp. So don't go converting it unless you have this green piece of, the green part at the top of your stamp. Then you know you need to convert them to cling stamps. And here's a little mask I made with before. All right, so that's my piggy. Still my favorite. So that's cling. Let's see how many of these come in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get six sheets, 168 little pieces. And I bet I don't even need to use the whole thing to make it cling enough onto the stamping block. You, you could probably just get away with just one for a stamp like this size. You probably don't need to cover the whole thing with cling, just enough so it's going to stay on your stamping block. So I'm really glad we got smart and started selling these because so many of us want to convert our stamps that are not cling to cling. That's A. And B, some of us want to convert our wooden stamps because they take up so much room. Here's another example of that, by the way. One that's not cling, that, that looks like cling, but it's not. The crafting forever. Um, yeah, if you want to take your wooden stamps and convert them, this is what I'm going to show you next, his love. Then, you know, you can take your wooden stamps and convert them by, by using the cling adhesive, the cling adhesive. Okay, so let's see. His love is on page 50. And I've already been commissioned to make party favors for a First Holy Communion. And I think I'm going to make the party favors. I, I, need, I was asked to make boxes to hold rosaries because rosaries... And it's going to be an outside barbecue event, so it's actually uh, rosaries, and I'm going to put my mini Tic Tacs in them because Tic Tacs don't melt if you give them out outside. Anything like that, maybe some treats that don't melt. And I'm going to be using this cross for, uh, so I'm glad this just came in. This cross is going to be the party favor. And I'm going to look around because I have so many stamps, and I'm going to see if I have one that says First Holy Communion on it. And if not, I'm going to probably, maybe I could put, the girl's name, or they said they didn't want to date on it, but I could put congratulations, something like that. You know, so I'll, I'll figure out what kind of sentiment to put on the cross, like maybe across it or on the side of it. But these are going to go with little boxes for rosaries. I'm thinking of using the, the box called, if the rosary is really small, I might be able to fit it in a curvy keepsake box, but I'm thinking more of a square box using something called perfect parcel dies. All right, so let's look at his love. You're a blessing in my life. This world needs more encouragement right now. So you can send this to people and make people feel good. His love never fails. Hope, faith, rejoice and be glad always. This is a nice Bible. What if you're in a Bible study and you want to make bookmarks for your Bible study? This would make a nice bookmark. I mean, this, this could be on a bookmark, I should say. This piece you cut out and then you could put it as a decoration on a bookmark. And if we're going to cut this out with this can of cut, I know we're going to need the pencil trick for those praying hands because of the, there's an open gap there. So very nice, very nice stamp set. Let's say it's cling and it's nice rubber, etched rubber. Look at the detail on that Bible. How cool is that? 
<laughs> I'm glad you like the happy hippo dies. Sherry, I guess different people, are, I, I get to see comments at different times. Even though I'm showing this, someone else might have just joined in and got to see an earlier part of my video. So the, while the comments come in real time, it's based on what people are watching at the time. All right, so that was his love. And let's see what else. I have some clear medium envelopes. So I get asked a lot. Hey, I'm glad you like that stamp set, Denise. I get asked a lot, like, how do you put your cards in bags? Like when I send them to people, when I send my cards to people. And a lot of times I say, oh, I get them from stamping up. And then my crafty friends go to my store and they say, I can't find them. I can't find the bags. Well, that's, this is why. They're not called bags. Again, paperchef.stampinup.net. They are called clear medium envelopes. So I will show you. I get these all the time. This isn't something new. This is just something I put in pretty much every order because I make so many cards. All right, so let's see. I just made some cards. They should be sitting close by. Don't have an avalanche. I'm just trying to find anything that I can grab to put inside this bag so I can show you that it's a standard size card here. Did I mail them off already? No, no, here we go. I didn't mail these. I knew I didn't mail them. So I just made a bunch of cards. Here's one. Here's the good things in life are better with you. And this was my last tutorial or could have been the tutorial before where I showed how to cut out stamped images with the scan and cut. And I showed you how to cut out these feathers and this flower and how to make this card. So here I have a card. Let's see if I've done the inside yet. I've done the inside, it's Whisper White. And what I tend to do is when I give like a thank you to somebody or like a customer, I tend to just give them a card that they can use and bless someone else with. So they, don't, they not only get happy mail, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut it. They don't only get happy mail, but they get to bless someone else with the happy mail if they want to. And I peel this off, see? And now my card is protected. Now, in the United States, they let you mail something like this. You can mail it, this can be your envelope. I would put this behind though. I, I would I would take the, the graphic and turn that around and I would address, you could address the envelope and you can send it just like this. This can be your envelope and you can put a stamp on it and mail it. But I tend to put other stuff in with it and then I label it with my personal information. So those are called clear medium envelopes. Very kind of like a must have item if you want to protect your cards and you know label your cards, things like that. All right, what else do I have in my box without knocking off my more paper okay I'm again I'm not going I I'm not going over all the paper again because I just did a video on all the types of designer series paper hey good I'm glad you like that Yvonne the feathers this one is the new color we'll open this one the new ink colors these are just designer series papers used I, I got extra for my paper share so in every order I'm getting lately I'm getting extra paper because as, as people order a paper share, I can get extra paper. So let's see. I'm going to open the new ink colors next. Let's make some room for the ink colors. I will open this paper and I will, I will show you my ink because that just came in. My new ink color ink. I don't think I'll get a chance to play with it because I was requested by Danita, one of my crafty friends. She requested that I do a tutorial on working with the different inks. And I thought, oh, hi, aloha, Lisa. Uh, I thought, why not do a tutorial while I open the inks from scratch so I could open them, you know, from the beginning and show you the ink. So I'm not going to open these. I'm going to wait until my, I'll just, I'm not going to open them. I'm, I'm going to be doing a tutorial about how to open the ink, how to use the ink and that kind of good, all that good stuff. So when you get an ink, if you use a lot of ink, which I'm, which I tend to use a lot of ink. I like to get the re-inkers. We were limited with one, we were limited to supply of getting just one re-inker each. That's for customers and demonstrators because they, they were having trouble getting the bottles, not the ink itself, but the, the supplier was having trouble getting the bottles to put the ink in. So, you know, so sometimes the supply chain is affected in strange ways, but we were able to get more than one ink pad, but only one of these re-inkers. Now, why would you need a lot of re-inkers? Because some people use these to color embossing paste and they dye ribbon with them. And there's lots of things you can do with re-inkers besides just, you know, re-inking your stamp pad with them. All right, so I'm not gonna open these, but these are the ink colors. These are our five new ink colors. Okay, 
and the, but I will open the paper so you can get to see you get to see the ink colors in a better way. I have the the paper because my early birds got some of this. So let's see. This is called Misty Moonlight. This is the new ink color designer series paper. And that's the other side of Misty Moonlight's designer series paper. This is one side, scripty font or scripty words. And that's the other side. I like this side better. That's the wooden pattern. Cinnamon Cider. Polka dot and that cool pattern. Scripty. It's not scripty. I just mean text. It's not script text. It's just text. Very hard to read, but it's just text. It's not script. Okay, and then there's the other side, the wood. Magenta Madness. Totally growing on me. This color's growing on me. Where at first I wasn't all so keen, but now it's kind of growing on me. Okay, Magenta Madness. Bum Bumblebee. This is Bumblebee. And Bumblebee. So you get eight sheets of each color. This is just Jade. The last color of the ink colors is just Jade. And just Jade. Okay, so that's, that's what you get in your Designer Series paper pack. Now, something about these paper packs. I didn't get any other color besides the ink color because I'm, right now I'm concentrating on trying to just check out the new products but I, I i will be getting the other colors later probably but we have this paper i just showed you is in, available in other colors i wanted to show you the patterns up close and personal but if you like other color collections that was called the in colors but we have these in brights neutrals regals and subtles so these are these are color collections you can get those papers in other colors they're six by six all right I'm just grabbing the, uh, the, what are called the blends markers. Oh, I do have the cards after all. This is exciting. This box is like the never ending box of stuff. I didn't, all the stuff keeps coming out of the box. I'm like, what's it called? The Mary Poppins suitcase. All these things are coming out. These are my blends. And I think they're missing a blends here. Unless it's stuck in my box. I, I know I got the bumblebee. Well, I don't see it. So there's something missing. Maybe it's on back order. All right. I'm almost done, folks. I just have a couple more stamp sets. Put that over here. So I ordered all the new blends. I thought I did. So. Oh, they didn't have it. It wasn't listed. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, good. You're, you're going to keep me from going crazy then. So what Lisa said is they're not selling the blends in Bumblebee. So let's let's look at what she's talking about. Thank you. Okay, good. Because I thought maybe it was missing from my box. Okay, here. I got all the blends I could, meaning this is where you get the blends, down here. So if you want cinnamon cider blends, you use this bottom line. Just Jade. So I got all the new colors of blends. And then I got Just Jade. That was this one. And then I got Magenta Madness blends. These are the alcohol markers. And then I got Misty Moonlight blends. And then this one is the new, the only other new color I could find is all the way up here. It was up here and it said new. So I saw, I, my, I was right there. It says new. 153112. Okay, so you made a good point. So the point was, the point made was, in the comments, if you're reading the comments, is that the bumblebee color, this bumblebee color is so close to Crush Curry, it's so close to Crush Curry that it doesn't have a blend. So we're not missing a blend. It just doesn't have a blend. Because if you have Crush Carry, you, you have the, you'll have a color similar to this. All right, well, that's good to know. So we'll be coloring with those. I'll, I'll put that, I'm just going to include all that in my tutorial about how to, how to open the inks. Well, I'll do that soon. I'm going to do how to open inks and how to color with the different kinds of inks. I'll try to put it in one tutorial, but it might end up being more than one tutorial. All right, I found the stamps that I was looking for that I thought I had. And it's called Game On. It was in the bottom of my box. And it's on page uh, 28. This is the stamp set. That when I bought the whiskey stamp set, I thought this is going to go good with whiskey. Cards and whiskey. <laughs> so it's your day. Roll with it. Yeah. Hope your day is all fun and games. Lucky me because I have you with the dice. That's just, these are going to be fun to color and use for shading. And 
This is a nice little background one. And look, they did a shaker card here in the catalog. It can be masculine, it can be feminine. Chess pieces. I mean, we all know somebody that plays chess. This is just going to be fun. It's going to be fun too. And here it is, a cling stamp set. Fun to have a stamp set like this. So uh, there we go. And then this is another one. So nothing's better than is my other stamps. Nothing's better than, and you could, there's like coffee, nothing's better than other things. So I'm just excited about this one. Page 91. It's a true unboxing because even I didn't know what I bought. So it's like one of those times where I'm like, oh, I bought that. I didn't know I bought it. Well, I, I might have bought, knew I bought it, but I didn't know it was coming in this box. So this is nothing's better than, and it has a set of dies. So this was one of those items that the Million Dollar Achievers get to design their own stamp set. So the Million Dollar Achiever, it says here, it says somewhere here, it should say who, who designed it. It usually has the person's name. On it somewhere. I can't find it now. And I found it the day I was going through the catalog with y'all. All right. Can't find it. But it's somebody designed this. One of the one of our Stampin' Up! demonstrators helped design this stamp set. Which and, and dies and coordinating dies. There we go. Connie Stewart. Thank you, Denise. Connie Stewart did this. And I don't know where it's written somewhere. But Connie Stewart designed this. Oh, there it says it. It says it over there. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Now I found it right there. Million, inspired by million sales achiever, Connie Stewart. I just want to give credit where credit is due. There it goes. It's, it's written down there. I don't know why I kind of like see. Every time you look at the catalog, you see something different. Oh, okay. What's really nice about this are the words. The words, because I would probably cut this out with my machine, but then the words. I would love to cut the words out with my, my die cutting machine. And let's see what kind of stamp it is. It's photopolymer. The reason it's nice to have photopolymer stamps like this one are, is because you can do the two-step stamping. So you could stamp this first in black, memento black, the little coffee cup. Can you see that? Here, let's put the white behind it. And then you could take another color like crumb cake or, or early espresso or maybe something, maybe soft suede, and you can stamp there with the brown and you, or any color, and you can do it so you can see through on your stamping blocks when they're photopolymer like this. This is going to be just a fun, fun set. So that's called Nothing's Better Than. All right, we're at the bottom of the... We have a couple things that I can't open yet because if you know how I do card kit series, I open these as part of my card kit series. So I'm not going to open this box. This is called Simply Citrus Card Kit. So I did get it, but I'm going to open it as part of my series or maybe just a, a single video. But I will definitely make something with the Simply Citrus Card Kit, which should be at the front of this catalog. So, I, you know, look for that coming up in the next several weeks. Well, I don't know when I'll do it. I want to do it before the summer, though. Well, this is the summer. Who am I kidding? Everything's just blurring together. The days, the weeks, the months, the seasons. It's all... Here we go. This is the one. This is it. I want to do this one soon because it's going to be great for summer. It's the Simply Citrus Card Kit. So that's what's in this box. It's an all-inclusive kit, meaning you get all these things in the kit. So I'll be opening this box and being excited to see what's in it myself. I will film myself opening it. Then I'll make projects with it. I'll time how long that took, and I'll let you know. All right, this is next is, whew, let's see. Next is called Zoo Globe. The next set is called Zoo Globe. It goes along with something I already have. Z, page 54. Okay, that's the one I'm going to show you next, this one. See your samples there. There are your samples. Absolute cuteness. And this goes along with something I already have. So this one is going to go along with the, the wintry seasonal thing I already have. Let's see what that one's called. Still scenes. I don't know where it's at. Here. Here it is. This is the one I already have. This one. This is called Still Scenes. And so I used this at Christmas time, the holiday catalog. And it's in this catalog too, but that is going to go along with that. 
And we have some globes that you can make 3D cards with it. And this is just going to be fun and whimsical. Okay, so you can see how you can even make the little koala like he's on a tree. And let's see what kind of stamp set it is. Okay, it's again a photopolymer stamp set. Okay, so happy with that. And I think that's all I'm going to show you. I just have, these are just little odds. These are odds and ends. You can't really see them. But um, this is this is like odds and ends. So we'll do another tutorial on this. This is called the mini paper pumpkin box. I just want to see for scale. But I'm going to do a tutorial on how to cover these. How to use our designer series paper, like from your paper share. Okay, this is food safe box. So that would be the inside. The shiny side's the inside. You can stamp right onto this, this rougher side. And what you do with these paper pumpkin boxes, or all our boxes, is just fold along the score lines first. And then you do the assembly. So these are going to be great for shipping. And I will do all the measurements and find out how to cover this with designer series paper. I mean, I'll figure out, not find out. There's nothing to find out. It's just a matter of experimentation and measurements. So just like any other box, let's see. As I say, just like any other box, you're going to go something like this, just like a regular paper pumpkin box, I should say. And you're going to do that. And you're going to push these through. Okay. And they tuck in there. Hear that little sound? A little sound. Get rid of those little pieces of cardboard there. Oh, these are simply adorable. They're the size of a stamp set almost. I'm getting rid of these little things, these little pieces. And that's it. Boom, boom, boom. We can decorate the inside, decorate the outside, and ship it just like this. And then you can see these little flaps. I'm putting this together for the very first time with never having seen it before. And look how simple that is to put together. It doesn't get easier than that. Look, how, look at the size of it. I mean, it's, you could put it here. Let's see if we can put a stamp pad in there for a prize. Customer prize. Ooh, you can. Let's see if you can put two stamp sets in there. Ooh, yes, you can. Look at that perfectly. Two stamp sets. Wouldn't that be a nice prize for my host code drawing? Let's see if you can't put the inker in there. <gasps> yes, you can. Two stamp pads and an inker. Uh, maybe next month I'm going to make that one of my prizes. I have to put like generic colors that some of y'all don't have yet. Oh, well, look. Fun. Okay, so this is going to be nice to ship to decorate the inside and outside of. What other odds and ends I have? I just had some other odds and ends. These are other odds and ends. This was uh, acetate card boxes. This is something new in our packaging department. When I say new, meaning the way you could tell if something's new, back here in the back when you see packaging, it'll actually have a little thing that says new. I forget where the packaging is now. As many times as I've gone through this catalog, here it is. Mini paper pumpkin boxes. You see that? It says new. And you get how many of those? Decorate 10 boxes for only $7.50. I mean, you can't beat that. These are heavy duty. I mean, these are nice. You can ship them. You can decorate them. I mean, these are nice. Put them in other packages. And then next I'm going to show you this is new. Acetate card boxes. Why didn't I get all these? Because I have all these. I have this card box. It's a big card box. I have these little mini treat boxes. I have those. I have the regular paper mini pizza boxes. I have the bags. So I just bought the two new things. Let's see what these are. This says acetate card box. So it goes like this. Let's see. Let's put a piece of paper behind it so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just doing this. I'm folding it. And I'm trying to see if it has a clear film on it. Sometimes there's a clear film on these and I don't see a clear film. I'm going to just fold in the sides. And while it was flat, I should have folded these up. So while it's flat, you want to fold these little creases. Okay. And now you can put our little mini, we make these little three inch cards. No, we don't make the cards. We make the envelopes, sorry. We make the envelopes, the three inch envelopes. And you can make your own cards using your scan and cut or just your tr paper trimmer. And you can make tiny little note cards and give them to people. And you put them in these little clear boxes. Super adorable. Let's see if a sticky note fits in there. Yep, sticky notes fit in there. Okay, so that's about, so these are a little bit over three inches, so I like those. All right, odds and ends. All right. 
This is called the Butterfly Gems. I really didn't think these were going to be so 3D. These Butterfly Gems. I just saw the embellishments somewhere. They were the other way. So these really didn't look like they'd be so 3D. I thought they were going to be flat. Which is fine. I mean, I like them 3D. But I'm just saying, I just thought they'd be... They totally don't look like the picture. Maybe I didn't... Maybe these aren't these. Maybe these are something else. Let's see. 152481. 152481. Interesting. See, they're, they are cool looking, but they just don't... I thought these were like flat sort of a opaque and they're, they're like 3d and and shiny which is cool we, we, we like shiny things okay so adhesive back sequins let's open them up i'm trying to keep this under an hour so i'm just going to show you the last things real quick oh that's kind of neat they're small and big so these are these are the purple posy rococo rose seaside spray terracotta tile and See how shiny they are? And pretty peacock. They were the last year's in colors. All right, what is this one? I bought this combo pack of ribbon because I like ribbon. Let's see, this was called this one, Playing With Patterns Ribbon Combo Pack. Okay, let's see what colors. Coastal Cabana, that's this one. Night of Navy, that's this one. And Purple Posy. We're not opening ribbon right now. And we're also not going to open this, but I'm just going to show it to you. I have to figure out how to use it. I thought about opening it on the camera, but I just said, you know what? I better figure out how to use it first. So I will open this up and figure out how to use it. And then I'll show you how to use it in one of my next tutorials. It's called Stamp and Seal and Stamp and Seal Refill. And now my box is officially empty. There it is. And it's seen better days. There's my box. It's empty. I've shown you everything in my box. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Oh, there was something on my table though. I didn't show you. I, I thought I was done. This is this is something in my box. But I, I didn't open it yet, but it was on my table. And that is called, and then I'm done. That's my conclusion. I'm done. This is my new topper punch. So I'll get to play with this in a future tutorial. All right, so I hope you enjoyed my unboxing. Let's see what the name of this punch is called. It's called Fancy Tag Topper Punch. I hope you saw something that you want to put on your wish list. Feel free to comment about some of the, your favorite items you saw today. I hope to do another unboxing for you in the near future. And if you want to sign up for my designer series paper share before the 15th of June, there'll be a link in the description after this video is over. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. See you next time.